Welcome to, to the last part of uh, IGCSE Environmental Management Chapter 4. This, this is the last part of the topic. And um, our next video will begin to look at uh, Chapter 9. Now, still on water and its environment, but in this aspect, we're going to be looking at how managing water related diseases. So, quickly, um, managing water related diseases, the first uh, aspect that we'll be looking at is waterborne diseases and what they are. So, you find out that waterborne diseases are spread by consuming contaminated water, uh, which is majorly due to poor sanitation which is due to poor sanitation and untreated sewage. Now, if you need to know how sewage is being treated, uh, you can watch our previous video on water management. Uh, so, you find that the waterborne diseases are spread by consuming contaminated water due to poor sanitation and untreated sewage, or by washing food, pot and pan or hands and face in dirty water. Now, example of water-related diseases are cholera and typhoid. So, uh, cholera are usually intestinal infection that causes sever uh, severe diarrhea that may lead to dehydration and eventual death. Um, not going into detail on the process that lead to the formation of a uh, uh, cholera. It is caused by a bacteria called fibrocholerae that attaches itself uh, to the wall of the small intestine, particularly uh, at the ileum, and uh, we now produces toxin that will cause the release of chloride ion from the wall of the intestine into the gut, which will now cause a differences in osmotic uh, movement of water. Uh, so water will now leave the cell of the lumen of the small intestine into the gut. So the cells will lose water because of the difference in uh, chloride ions in the molecules. So, uh, so I'm not going into that detail. You just need to know that it's an intestinal infection uh, that causes severe diarrhea that may lead to dehydration and eventual death. Now, uh, causes um, will be poor sanitation. Uh, contamination of water and food, disruption of pipe and water supplies uh, after a natural disaster occurrence. Now, this can lead to the development of the bacteria that causes cholera, and that bacteria is called vibrocholera. Now, water bread disease. Water bread disease. Now, the, the carrier bred in water and spread the disease by biting its victim. So it's bred in water and spread by biting its victim. An example is malaria. So you find out that malaria is a life-threatening disease which is transmitted through the bite of an infected anuplet mosquito. That's the female mosquito. Now, which is the vector. Now, what it does is it carries the plasmodium parasite. So once bitten, the parasite reaches your bloodstream. And symptoms of malaria is high temperature, and fever. You can also have diarrhea. You can have dehydration and always feeling very weak. These are uh, symptoms of malaria. Now, your syllabus also expects you to know the life cycle of malaria. Now, um, if you study certain material, you find out that uh, there's a whole lot of process involved in the life cycle of malaria where the uh, plasmodium parasite gets into the blood, is transported to the liver. It goes through different stages. However, you, you don't need that. The schizos, you don't need that. You just need to know this. Now, why is, I, I've been explaining that aspect for quite some years now, and I've come to find out that when I went through max schemes, those, those parts are really not required. What is required in the life cycle of malaria is just this, which is straightforward and easy to understand. And if you write this, you're going to get your full marks. Now, malaria parasite is carried by mosquitoes. We know that, uh, specifically the anoplets, anopheles mosquito. Now, mosquitoes are vectors. That, that's, that means the, the aid in the transfer of this um, parasite. 
Now, specifically the female anoplen mosquito. So infected mosquito bite on infected humans. So or uninfected mosquito bites infected humans, which which whichever. Now, if it is the infected mosquito bites uninfected humans, that means the human becomes infected. If uninfected mosquito bites infected humans, that means the mosquito will now carry the parasite, uh, and that causes malaria. So must because why mosquito feed on human blood and can carry the plasmodium parasite that causes malaria. Now, once the malaria gets into a human, the first thing is, is transported by the blood into your liver cells, which causes the liver cells to burst. So it infects the liver cells, use the, uh, uh, use the organelles in the liver cells to reproduce and causes it to burst by disrupting the cell structure and function. So the parasite reproduces, multiplies in humans or in mosquito. Now, in humans, it gets into the liver cell where it multiplies and makes the cell burst. That, 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 that is all you need to know about life cycle of a, a malaria parasite. Now, strategies to control malaria. Now, first, you use of anti-malaria drugs, um, mosquito nets also, uh, spraying water with oil. Now, if you spray water with oil, it will now reduce the amount of oxygen that will be found there that will be able to move, penetrate into the water and thereby um, disrupting the process of uh, formation of mosquitoes. Now, wear clothes that covers the whole body when you, when you want to sleep. Uh, control of vector and mosquito with pesticides. So you use pesticide to kill them. Uh, removal of stagnant water uh, so there won't be point for mosquito to breed. Now, application of oil to water sources uh, which is quite similar to this, spraying oil and application of oil to water sources. Now, use vaccination. You know, vaccination lead to uh, active immunity against malaria. So you, you, you people use, uh, the, you go for vaccination against malaria. It helps to give long-term immunity. Now, educate people on the risk of malaria by setting up campaigns and programs. Now, reason why it is difficult to control mal malaria. Now, there are certain areas in the world where control of malaria is quite very difficult. And some of the major reasons is the remoteness of uh, population and lack of money to control for control methods, lack of health care, lack of awareness among the population, resistance to anti-malaria drugs. That's people refuse to take uh, anti-malaria drugs. Now, areas with lots of stagnant water present. Now, this is very difficult for you to control malaria in this type of environment. So, you need to actually understand that. Uh, if the area is very remote, if there is lack of money for uh, uh, control, majorly less economically developed countries, and lack of health care, you have lack of awareness among population resistance to anti-malaria drugs and uh, areas with lots of stagnant water present. Now, how cholera is spread from one person to another? How is cholera spread from one person to another? Now, you find that uh, cholera is caused by a bacteria called vibrocholerae, and person infected with this bacteria you find that a person uses the toilet to defecate, so the sewage from infected person will leak into water supply. So your water supply eventually become contaminated, and you also drink the same water, so you to yourself become contaminated by the bacterium. So it's simple. A contaminated person uses a sewage. The sewage gets into water supply. You consume the water, then you become infected. Now, strategies to control cholera. Uh, the major strategies involved in the control of cholera include to ensure that uh, the sewage and drinking water are kept separate. Sorry about that. Uh, to ensure that the sewage and drinking water are kept separate. They should not be mixed together in any circumstance. Now, sewage removed directly into a treatment work or sewage treatment plant to help purify it and kill any form of bacteria that is found in it. Now, water being treated before it's delivered into homes. Do not use contaminated water to wash your food. Hands should be washed after contact with any 
um, f- fiacal uh, physical uh, f- uh, fiacal uh, material. That's your physics. Sorry, uh, boiling water, and uh, you should boil the water and always add chlorine to it to help kill any form of bacteria that is found in it. So um, basically, thank you. We've come to an end of this topic called uh, Environmental Management Chapter 4, which is quite bulky, but we are done. So please subscribe to my channel. So uh, once we start Chapter 9, you get constant update.